Hi guys, we keep building our one page on Webflow. Last week we created the hero section and today we are going to finish um, the desktop version. So let's go. So yeah, we can create a new section. Let's not forget to add this section uh, tag. And yeah, collection. Uh, I really don't have a lot of padding and it's hard for me to, to see because well it's not hard actually let's see yeah 50 pixels so yeah. and then we have a first row right here with uh, two columns of three and a space of one column. So let's do that. Let's add a row. Let's add a call, call LG3. Let's duplicate this and let's um, add some paragraph. Okay, so first let's name this. I can say collection text maybe. Yeah. And I can add my modifier now, text italic, and boom. Uh, let's justify this, justify this to the end. And yeah, I want to have and yeah, I want to have a space right here, and we have a class for that, and let's go. Let's go to the style guide to see that. Um, maybe I missed it. Yeah, right there. We have some classes that are adding some margin on the call element and we can add uh, the equivalent of one column or two columns. So. Uh, and yeah, so it's a combo class and for example, this one is called ML one call and it's margin left one call. And you have uh, one column margin left. So very easy. And so I'm going to add it on this one. So let's take the call and it's going to be margin right one call. Boom. And we can see that the alignment right here is perfect. So that's a, that's a cool thing. Uh, now let's move on. 150 pixels. Um, let's add another row. Up. Call. And it's taking seven. Column. Let's justify this to the end. That's really not convenient that when you add a new element, let's say for example I have a, I had a, a netting, my element is closed. So that's really, really boring. And so this is my collection heading. What does it say? Explore the collection. Um, yeah, maybe I don't know if we should reduce the line height, maybe a little bit. Yeah, yeah, we need to. Uh, let's try one. Yeah, one seems right. And so, yeah, let's add some margin. Let's go. Same 
something and maybe I can say something like collection and it's an item and I can say item wrapper let's add an image um, in our case yeah let's not bother with the, the image height for the moment let's say collection image and then I can say collection info wrapper and it's to get these elements uh, so let's copy that oh uh, let's add some text All right this part is italic let's say collection info text and then I have the price so it's a paragraph as well and it's collection info price and it's editorial new and 41 pixels up Alright, maybe let's change the line height. Now I can do something like that. Boom, boom. And add some padding. 21. Yeah, this is enough. <coughs> this is enough. And yeah, so now we have element let's add a width let's add a width um, and yeah let's say something like let's add a modifier because I want to change the height of the image because this one is 672 672 well no, I, I don't need to so perfect the, the height is always the same so 672 divided by 16 rem 42 and that's great and now i can duplicate i can say justify and and my second element is there so that's cool all right let's add the text pan uh, text italic All right, the, the, the quality is really, really bad. Yeah, I'll take care of that a bit later, but... And by the way, uh, the, the layout is looking a bit weird uh, on my page, but um, the, the, the overlapping effect and everything, um, we are going to create that during the, the animation process. So it's going to be uh, some uh, cheese up animation and scrolling animation so for the moment we only need to build it that way and we'll create all the cool effects after and one of one reason the image is looking well is that it's on fill and not cover and it's already a bit better again i can duplicate this uh, change that Eighty five. The text is the same as the in the first one, so it doesn't really matter. Eighty five. Um, I'm a bit bothered by. By that, ah, yeah, I know why. Yeah, <laughs> because I have the original image, and okay, so let's just change that. Let's call this one asset. It's really not good, but 
Never mind. Yeah, looking better. Okay, and the last one is this one. And actually what I'm going to do is that I'm, I'm going to add another call on the same row. And it's going to be a call a G4, uh, 5, sorry. Um, because I think that uh, we'll animate that so that it come here when when we scroll so I don't I, I'm going to put this on the same same row okay so that's the shirt let's change the price let's not change the text it doesn't really matter um, and again I'm not adding any spaces between the row for the moment because as I said it's going to be end all during the animation process so for the moment I'm leaving everything as it is and that's it for our collection section I think uh, we can move on to this one let's just check the padding 300 and I think we have 300 as well yeah and I'm going to call this one quote so I can create a new section Let's not forget to change the tag and this one is going to be cross frapper and have 300 divided by 16. All right, um, let's have some text, quote, text, and we have the class P large for that. Over asking and yeah and normally what's cool is that now the line break is staying the same. So we don't have any weird looking text or, or anything. Okay, so we have that, then we have a row like a row with a first call, a second one, and a third one. So let's add that. Call, call LG3. Yep. And the last one I'm going to say call LG4. Actually, I'm not going to say anything. Um, then I have some text. Kevin Mathieu. And I'm going to say quotes. So this is the name. Up. Uh, text italic. And I actually don't need to put any classes on those elements. Uh, but uh, I like to add some some class to, to them. But it's a personal preference. Uh, okay. Up. Think. And yeah, so let's add some padding. Yeah, we can say 30 maybe. And it's, um, it's going to be a margin. Okay, looking good. Looking good. Uh, and we are done for this section. Uh, for this one, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. Um, the, the thing is that we have uh, some Z index. Um, we need to play with the, the, the Z index. So the element needs to be on the same level. So I think I will uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Maybe use absolute position. It looks like absolute positioning is the best way, but I'm not so sure. So 
let's use call and uh, and uh, and we'll see. I should add a wrapper to the image or not. Uh, probably not. Yeah, let's not let's not add a wrapper. No, let's let's add a wrapper just in case. Let's add a modifier to change the height. The height is 307. of this one 240 and again I'm not too worried about the exact uh, position of my images because we are going to add some scrolling effect to that so we are going to have some parallax and for example this element is going to be faster than this one um, and this one is going to come back and everything so for the moment, I just want to position my element, and I play around with the the, the, the position during the animation phase. Okay, so let's move on. Let's add a row, or oh, maybe not. Let's say something like creativity, adding wrapper. I have an H2. Love. All right, and so then I have two, two, and uh, maybe this one is going to be on another row because the Z index is not the same. So yeah, this one is going to be on another row. So I have two and two and the height is the same. Yeah, two and three, so that's perfect. Um, I can take this. Uh, what did I say the height was? Two or three, so let's say 200. Oh yeah, my bad. Um, 
All right. Can you even duplicate this? And even though the, so the height for this element and this element is the same, so I could use the same, I could keep the same class for the two, but I want um, a different class because I'm, I'm going to target this element during the animation process, so I need to add a new class. But if I did not need to do that, I would keep the same class for the two elements. So some jeans, some pants, and uh, yeah, so I have some of the text right here. Join us on Instagram. Um, creativity text. It's 18 pixels. Let's add some margin. Yep. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the link style is a bit, is a bit weird. Creativity. to add one last row and we are good. And I think it's taking four columns, yeah. And I can already add a margin on the right, yeah. And I'm going to copy and paste. Uh, let's say justify end. Ah uh, yeah, and yeah, okay. By the way, I made a mistake right here because, um, yeah, that was maybe a mistake. Let's say auto for this one because I don't want to change everything. But image four, and it's like twelve point five five. Maybe I should have added the 8 on the image element and not the wrapper element because of this one but it's working that way so that's fine um, okay and the height is 400 oh yeah my bad 5 And we are good for this section. And yeah, maybe I will have to play around with relative position and try to make everything a bit um, a bit different. But again, I'm going to play around with this during the, the scrolling animation, so I don't need to touch it anymore for the moment. And yeah, it's been almost 30 minutes, but I feel like it's um, it's getting together well, and we only have the footer left. So, so yeah, let's do that. In uh, yeah, I'm not going to cut just to to do the header, to, to do the footer because the footer is going to be super fast, I think. Um, no, let's do, let's do it like this. And so I'm adding a section outside the main element because this is not my content anymore. This is the footer for my website. And I'm using a footer tag. And actually I'm going to add a modifier on my section just to make sure. And then footer <coughs> wrapper. Um, yeah, super easy. 
I have a row with hop. Let's lock this a row. It's taking three columns and three columns. Call LG3. And I have a margin on the right. this one and just delete that um, let's add some padding to our element um, Maybe I need, maybe actually I need two rows and I need a call LG7. To justify end. Because I want my two divs right there to be aligned uh, on the top. So I can just do it like that. Text. Um, yeah, and these are going to be links, I think. Uh, I don't know. Let's just add them as a paragraph. Justify end. Oop. Yeah, and let's go. Let's call them link anyway because I think they should be. And let's add some padding between this and this, 80 pixels. Um, let's do something like that. And I, I could add a modifier on my row element to add the padding directly on the row element, but I really don't like to mess with these classes. I like to keep them as simple as I can. So that's why I did that. Uh, let's add some margin top. Maybe that's a bit too much. Okay. And we are almost done. The, vi the video is quite long. Uh, I hope it was not too boring and that you will uh, and that you that you are enjoying it um, so let's duplicate and I, actually for example this is a good example of when we should use a modifier as a class or if we should apply directly the, the style on the element. I think I'm going to change the style and to make this italic on the class because if, for example, I have a, a feedback that says uh, I don't want this text to be in italic anymore, uh, I need to take every class and then remove the class and maybe it's going to change again. So uh, really, I prefer to do it that way. And let's add one last image, and this is the hardware image, footer image, 100% width. Ah, uh, maybe. Nope. Okay. Okay, 100% uh, width, maybe let's say 100, and yeah, we are done, I think, um, and yeah, we are done for the 
for the desktop version. Um, so yeah, the, the video was quite long, and we did some work, some uh, some work in the previous videos, but it was pretty fast actually. Um, yeah, it's looking good. Um, so yeah, I'm going to cut the video now, um, and we will. Uh, get to the responsive in the next video. I really appreciate if you are still watching the video. Uh, I really hope it's going to help you for your web pro development. Uh, and yeah, see ya.